It's working. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to welcome you here uh, in the Prague House on yet another edition of the Science Cafe. Uh, on uh, this occasion, together with our distinguished guests, Mr. Andrzej Adamowski from the Resetox Center, which is the part of the uh, Faculty of Science of the Masaryk University in Brno, and Mr. Guillaume Corradino, the director of the Pint of uh, Science Festival. It's a very convenient name, by the way. Um, today, in this occasion, we will, uh, we will uh, explore or elaborate on the microplastics and their impacts in our everyday life. And uh, I would like to use this opportunity as well to thank the organizers of this event, which are the Czech Center in Brussels, in the CELO, uh, Czech Liaison Office for Education and Research in Brussels, the South Moravian Region uh, Representation Office in Brussels, and the Prague House. Ladies and gentlemen, <coughs> excuse me, please enjoy your evening. Thank you. Thank you very much for the introduction. And uh, thank you very much for inviting me to moderate this event uh, with, uh, with André. So I'm the director of Pint of Science Belgium, um, just Belgium, but Pint of Science is located in 29 countries, so I have a lot of friends all around uh, the world. Uh, as for my name, close enough, it's Guillaume, but if you don't have a um, if you don't have the inspiration to pronounce it properly, you can just call me Orange or whatever you want to call it. I, I've been called many names before. So, um, before I introduce Andre a bit more, uh, I will do a bit of housekeeping. So, how is tonight going to take place? So, first of all, uh, the event is streamed online on Facebook. So, I hope your partners know where you are and they will not find out on Facebook. Um, if you don't want to be filmed, get in touch with one of the organizers and they will put you in a corner, I suppose. Um, so everybody will be safe. So, a program for the evening. We will start with a, about 40 minute conversation with Andre, where he will tell us about his work and microplastics and what it means for us to, uh, to understand what microplastics are, what they do uh, to us, uh, to the environment. Um, and after 40 minutes, we will give you the floor, so you will be able to ask questions. And after that, you will be welcome to a glass of wine. Um, but you need to earn the wine, so please prepare your questions. If there are no questions, there, are, there is no wine. <laughs> okay? At least three questions from the audience, otherwise no wine for anybody. <laughs> so please be ready. Now, um, I think we're ready to go. So, you have been already introduced, so I will just complete by saying that uh, indeed you, you work at the Institute of uh, the Faculty of Science of Masaryk University in Brno. Uh, your research focuses on environmental toxicology, meaning that uh, you aim to understand the mechanism and impacts of exposures to chemicals and toxins. Um, and we had a little chat before to understand whether pesticides were toxins or chemicals. They are chemicals, now I know. Um, and we're not going to talk about pesticides today, just microplastic, and I think that's more than enough. To, um, to create anxiety for us for the evening. Um, Andre has been involved in various Horizon 2020 projects in the past, so the European Research Programme, and he works as an expert evaluator for European Research Council, and he's a guest editor for several journals. So he knows what he's talking about, and I'm not going to contradict him on anything he's gonna say tonight. If you want to contradict him, you do it as your, at your own risk, after the conversation, okay? So first of all, Andre, uh, am I forgetting anything about you that has not been mentioned before uh, when introducing you? No, thank you for the introduction, it was quite complete, thank you. <coughs> That's almost too easy. So, on my side, I'm gonna start with a simple question. So I assume microplastics are very small plastics, but I'm not an expert, so why don't you tell us exactly what we are talking about here? Uh, yes, correct. Uh, so the microplastic is the topic of this evening. Uh, as you may know, the microplastics really come from the bigger plastic. So if the bigger plastic in the environment degrade in time, the microplastics are created. And they are ubiquitous in the environment currently. 
we actually recognize uh, two sources of microplastics. One, degradation products of bigger plastics, most probably waste, and the other one are so-called primary microplastics, and we made them. We made them, or our act activities made them. And uh, we made them for various purposes, for example, in cosmetics, as, a, as those uh, uh, ingredients that actually can get rid of your the skin, uh, I think peeling agents it's called. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I don't use it, of course. But uh, the, and the other sources are, or the other applications are like, for example, for drilling uh, drill liquids or for paints as, 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 as a fillers and stuff like that. So we make them. And if we make them, then sooner or later end up in the environment. That's one part. The other part is, the, is, is those, those particles that really create, are created by degradation of bigger plastics, by abrasion or by chemical degradation, by biotic degradation, but they stay in the environment and it's, it, that, that's, that's become a problem. All right. Um, in a nutshell, why should we care? Uh, that, that, that's a good question. I mean, we should care. Uh, because the plastics, they, they are everywhere, they sooner or later end up in the, in, in the environment. And we have to say that the plastics, you know, they are pretty stable. They stay in the environment for decades, for years, for hundreds of years. Even from, from the Middle Age, when the center of Brussels was created, if somebody would, would leave a piece of plastic there, we would still find it and we would, we would be able to use it. Because the, 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 the degradation is so slow. And most of the plastic, we have to realize, was created to stay long, but they degrade, they degrade in time very slow. But the amount of plastic that we produced in the past is enormous. From 50s, when the plastics was actually invented and massively used and massively manufactured, we used more than 9 billion tons of plastics. That's a lot. Currently, we are using, we, currently we making, as, as a whole world, we are making like 800 million tons per year. And the annual growth is 8%, so we are making more and more plastics. Even the recycle rate is quite high, it's like about 3% in Europe. Still, many of the plastics then end up in the waste, and sooner or later they become in the environment. But, uh, yeah. I mean, okay, I understand microplastic, the volumes, it's huge, um, but are all microplastics equal, or should we wor be worried about some kinds of microplastic and not the others? That's and it. are we mm -hmm. including the so-called um, bioplastics in there, okay, or, good. Mm -hmm. or not? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, maybe a little bit back from the, I, I, basically I did not answer your question, why we should care. Uh, we, we, should, we have to follow the, the, the precaution principle, that we have to like investigate and understand what is the problem about, to really be prepared when, when the problem will come in a, in a massive way. It's a good question. Microplastics is a general term. It's something like pesticides. There are a lot of chemically different pesticides for different many purposes. The microplastics is the same. So we recognize a lot of microplastics that actually originated from different plastics. You know, PVC, polyethylene, polypropylene, many different plastics. And also they, they differ in shape, in sizes, in a chemical composition, because the plastic is a very complex product. It's a very complex mixture of chemicals. So when you are talking about mi mi microplastics, we should not talk, we should, we, should we should not mention microplastics as a group, but each problem is connected with a specific size, which is very important in terms of, for, for, for example, the biological activity, form, size, and, and the origin. Uh, the, the bioplastics, that's a good question. I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm back. Uh, the, the biopolymers, yes, they can create small fragments called microplastics, but uh, the, the, the bio, biopolymers, that's, that's, uh, that's also a general term, you know, it's, it's we as a customers are always confused with what does it mean. Uh, the biopolymers can actually mean two things. The, 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 the polymers, they can easily degra degrade in the environment, so they, they, st they don't stay long, or they are, they are made out of the biological materials like sugar-rich plants, uh, crops, and, and stuff like that. So, and yes, they can, they can create microplastics, but they, in terms of the biodegradable, they, they, they fastly degrade. Polylactic acid, for example. The bags are made of polylactic acid nowadays, or some of them. If, if, uh, if you reach the proper store. <laughs> so, is it safe to say that they are good or at least not so bad microplastics? Or? Uh, okay, the microplastics, it's, 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 
it's uh, definitely not what we want in the environment. And this is not what we want in the food chain for many reasons. Uh, the, as I said, the, the, the increase of plastics, the increase of microplastics create a problem for various reasons. For example, nowadays, we can find microplastics almost everywhere. From, there, there are studies that found the microplastics in, in the Arctic regions, in, in the high icebergs in the, uh, in the Alps. Uh, you can find them in aquatic and marine bio biota, in soils, in, in, deep, in the deepest place on Earth, in, in, in the water. You can find them almost everywhere. And most importantly, you don't find them in the environment, but in the biota as well. So, for example, all if you if you uh, like have a time to go through the scientific literature, there is many evidences that microplastics and and, and nanoplastic that maybe we will uh, talk about it a bit later can be found in in many organisms from from shells, fish, plants, higher aquatic animals, in in almost every meal that we that, that we that we that we eat, or in, in most importantly in biota, it's, it's bad for them. So it's a problem. So how <coughs> likely is it that I'm carrying microplastic in the body and that we're all having microplastics. I mean, I, I, are we talking about everybody is contaminated okay. or mm. should we not panic yet? Uh, no, there that, that is no time to panic. Uh, no, 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 definitely not. Okay. Uh, there are actually two questions in, in biota. Yes, there are many studies that shows clearly shows that whatever you sample, you can find about, uh, you can find the my, my microplastics there. It's it's part of the dust, so it's almost everywhere in in in, in waters, in in beers, in in salt and stuff like that. In but did you say beers? I said beers. Yeah, oh. it's uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, in case of beer, it's a, it's a question of cost and benefit, right? <clears throat> but uh, yeah. Uh, in terms of humans, of course, that uh, even the the environment is in uh, that's that's definitely what we should take care in terms of the quantity of microplastics because the the, the environment is heavily contaminated. But uh, in terms of humans, uh, they are estimation how we humans are contaminated. It's because we can't really sample humans. That's what is not allowed. <laughs> so that's we have uh, so we have uh, so we have indications. For example, somebody calculated based. On the data and based what we what we eat, that every of us can ingest 50,000 particles of, of, of microplastics a year, which doesn't mean it's 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 harmful, because uh, other studies say that that uh, based on the, the 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 rodents, we can we are able to ingest uh, or you know, or the particles that are in our body in our digestive system can actually cross the digestion blood barrier like in only one percent. So it means that you can like intake two particles a day, which is considered as not a harmful level for for us. So so far, I mean, the indications are that, that some some small fraction of microplastics can go inside our body, specifically the mar particles that are lower than 10 micrometers. It's very small fragments, and then we have nothing about the fate. What what is happening to us? We don't know that. We don't have, we don't have the information. So just. To go back a second because you, yeah. you, you talked about particles in the body. Particles to me doesn't really, I can't visualize that. Um, how does it translate into like tablespoons of plastic in the body? Okay, are we talking uh, less? Like uh, it's it's teaspoon? yeah, it's a good it's a good question. It's 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 a very t very tiny amount. But you have to consider that microplastics. We are talking about micrometers. I know that many of them have no idea like how much is a micrometer, but let's say that your cell, your human cell, is like 50 micrometers, and we are talking about the particles that are 10 times smaller than the size of your cell. So 50,000 of those particles is definitely not a teaspoon, it's, it's less than that, more, it's, it's way, way, way less. Okay, don't get <coughs> angry, but I checked Wikipedia before. Yeah, okay. uh, this event, and I, I read that uh, the size to be considered microplastic is five millimeters. Does it make any sense to you? As a, as a yes, that's 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 correct. Because I would uh, definitely microplastics. If I were to yeah, yeah. The, 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 no. that, that's correct. The microplastics they have uh, so they have their own definition, and the definition says that everything, every plastic uh, piece that is less than five millimeters can be considered as a microplastics because five millimeters is five hundred. Uh, it's uh, well, every, every single plastics below five millimeters is, 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 is con be, can be considered as microplastics. But a bigger plastic is not that big problem for us as for, for the biota. The lower you go, the bigger problem it is. Because the lower fraction below 10 micrometers can actually you know, cross 
the barriers in your body and actually uh, reach up uh, the, the origins. So that that's, that would be that would be something that we should be worried about. I would guess. Okay, so smaller is not better in that case. Definitely not. Definitely not. Right. Okay. So the challenge you say we can't we can't sample our bodies to find out how much we have. So um, how do you do? How do people detect? What are the techniques to detect in uh, in the biological world the uh, the amounts or the traces mm -hmm. of uh, of microplastics? Yeah, good question. Uh, first of all, all the studies that are done with microplastics are actually done on experimental animals, and we know that you know they are able to to once they are ingested, they are able to migrate. So. Uh, then we can the results extrapolate on humans somehow. Uh, the detection techniques, uh, that, that's a real challenge. Because nowadays we have uh, three different techniques how to uh, detect microplastics in the environment. The bigger particles are completely okay, they are detectable, they are, they, you, you may observe them under a microscope. That's not a big problem, but the problem is below 5 to 10 micrometers and to nanoscale. Currently, even if we have uh, uh, techniques such as Raman spectroscopy or Fourier transformation infrared spectroscopy or other uh, fancy names for different techniques, they are not able to detect particles that are, for example, lower than one micrometer. And they are many of the particles that are lower fraction. So it's, it's complicated to detect them, we know they exist, but it's, it's, then it's complicated not only detect them, but to study them, to say something about the risks that are connected with those particles uh, in re with regards to our, our, for example, human health. So yeah, that the, 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 the detection is a, a real problem nowadays. Well, I assume that this is where you come in with your research. Uh, uh, sort of. Uh, I'm a toxicologist, so what we study, but we study not only like how the microplastic, what the par what the microplastic is, can do with your body or with some model organism, but we we actually study the chemicals that are inside. So that that's what my job. But I'm I'm happy that I cooperate with my colleagues from uh, uh, Czech uh, Central European Institute of Technology, specifically with Professor Kai's group, uh, on on a, on a novel detection system that would be able to somehow visualize the small particles in an intact origin. That's, that's what, would, uh, what, what we are uh, working on. The methodology itself is, is based on computer tomography, very sensitive computer tomography. Uh, there are many advantages. Uh, for example, the, the recent study showed that, that uh, it's, it's an Italian study that showed that we can find microplastics, microparticles, you know, 10, 15 micrometers polystyrene, I think it was, in, in placenta. And, and now is a big question, how is it possible? Like, for me, because uh, I, these particles are pretty, pretty, pretty big, and I know that microplastics are everywhere, and there is a high chance for cross-contamination, basically, you know, you can find microplastics almost everywhere, and it's very difficult to bring some specific piece of origin, cut it, bring it to to the laboratory and and and, and study the, the microplastics because the microplastics are everywhere. So the methodology that we are actually doing is able to see the microplastics in the origin without any cutting. So the chance for cross contamination is very limited. So if we would like optimize and bring this methodology, we believe that we can really bring a, a very solid proof that the microplastics can be found in, in human body, which by the way is very questionable nowadays because the, the, the techniques that are using does not directly prove of microplastics in, in the human body. So you're saying that there is a chance that <coughs> after drinking a few beers that I don't actually <laughs> ingest and keep the <coughs> microplastics in the body? I, 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 I see that the beer is something that, uh, <laughs> that is valuable. I'm but, also but, worried about the wine. But, uh, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yes, uh, that's, that, 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 that's correct. Uh, the presence of microplastics is currently, uh, I, would, I would bet, almost everywhere, including, okay, including so beers. <laughs> all right, so we can't escape it. So uh, all no. the food chain is contaminated, according to you, uh, well, according to science. Yeah, if you, yes, basically, basically it's, it's, it's very difficult to get rid of the microplastics. And the reason is if you, for example, if I mentioned the aquatic biota, the shrimps, you know, the, the shells, the fish, of course they are exposed in, in, the, in, the, in the environment that they live. But those plastics that are, for example, in the food, they come from packaging. That's, that's, the, that's, that's the thing, they come from packaging. 
and f through the, the, the how you process the food during manufacturing. Okay. There are, for example, studies that, that show that if you have a plastic bottle and you open it and close it a couple of times, you increase the number of microplastics there, which is completely understandable. I was about specifically to yes. ask about plastic yes. bottle. So if you just open it once, the fact that it's in a plastic bottle, do you get the microplastic in the water if you leave your bottle outside? That's, what the, the that's what the study says, yes. Okay. But, but, but again, <laughs> you have the, the, there are different. There are gonna like, spend a nice evening, I think. But, uh, but again, if you have uh, the microplastics in your digest, di digestive tract, uh, the, it is considered that the level of contamination of, of, of microplastics in your, in your digestive system is, is not that high to reach harmful levels so far. So far as the science knows? Uh, so far as the science knows and so far in the current situation. But pro the problem with plastic is increasing. We are producing more and more plastics and the plastics that more and more erode in, in the environment. So we, we consider or we think that the problem will be much higher in the future. That's why it's important to, to study them now. And that's, why, that, that's the answer for your question, why we should care. Indeed, and this is what you do as a toxicologist. You're looking at the, <coughs> what type of chemicals specifically from the microplastic get into the body, right? How long they stay, yes. what they do? Yes, yes, that's, that's, that's another question. So, so, so the microplastics, they, they can do something. For example, if you see the Ronan study or the, 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 the mice study, uh, it shows that the microplastic inside your body can cause an inflammation or when you inhale them, you have like asthma-like symptoms. So there are specific endpoints, specific adverse health outcomes that are connected with my microplastics. But you have to take into account that the plastics, the microplastics come from the plastics. And the plastics is a complex mixture of chemicals. Uh, now we have here a wooden floor, but in, 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 uh, in the hotel where I live, they have a PVC floor. And the PVC is, is a plastic that is full of, full of additives. Right? Many of the plastics are full of additives, but in PVC, 60% of the weight of a PVC plastic is not a plastic. It's a chemical called phthalates. Because PVC is very hard material, so make it flexible. You have to put there a lot of chemicals. And they are just plasticizers. But the plastics itself, they have a lot of chemicals they can leach, and this is what we study as a toxicologist. Make the long story short, that the, Every single plastic is different. Every single plastic has their own combination of very wide variety of chemicals. They are plasticizers, they are colorants, they are UV stabilizers to be uh, stable in UV light or in sunlight, antioxidative uh, uh, agents, uh, slippers, for example, tables, right? Antifog agents, they, they, they uh, for example, if you have a salad in the supermarket, you know, the plastic, it has antifox because everybody would like to, you know, buy the salad that, is, that, that, that looks nice. Uh, processing agents, a lot of them, a lot of them. And it creates a very unique mixture. So the microplastics, when they are inside your body or inside the animal's body, the biota, the fish, they can release those chemicals that can do, they can, they are harmful for the metabolism, they are harmful for the immune system, and they are harmful for microbiome living in those organisms. And that's important. This is what we study and this is what we found. Could you give maybe a concrete example of uh, the consequences of this? Uh, yeah, okay. So, so specifically, the research where, where I was involved, and that was, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, that was uh, by the way, uh, uh, part of a Marie Curie sponsored by, by, by Europe Commission, that, uh, that we investigated a specific uh, uh, plasticizers. The plasticizers <laughs> are probably chemicals that are in every single plastics and microplastics. And we found that once they are ingested, they can not only release the, the, the chemicals, but the chemicals itself, they can deregulate immunity, metabolism, and the microbiome in the way that the microbiome sends send the signals, they are deregulated, they send the signals to micro, to immune system, and there is a pro-inflammatory environment. And once, when you are long-term exposed to plasticizers, the long-term pro-inflammatory pro pro uh, uh, environment can cause a chronic inflammation, and this is what we don't want. So this is a, a specific example, and we studied plasticizers, phthalates, and they are many of the phthalates, but we study specific ones. So you talk about long-term effects, so yeah. uh, can I assume that when they are in the body, they stay there forever, or at least a very long time, or there is a way to get rid of them? Yes, the, the specifically the, the, the phthalates. The phthalates are something that maybe every of us uh, is aware of, the softeners, they are easily metabolized. So they, they are metabolized and we can get, get rid of them easily. But we are constantly exposed to, to, to phthalates. That, so that, 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 that's a huge problem. But in terms of the chemicals, yes, we have a pr 
pretty strong detoxification system that can get rid, get rid of the chemicals pretty easily. In terms of microplastics, once they are in your, for example, circulation system, in your, in your blood, or in, if they reach a specific origin, uh, the fraction that is below 500 nanometers, quite a small fraction, could be degraded by macrophages. So the macrophages then usually degrade bacteria and viruses, but they were shown to degrade plastics and actually uh, get rid of it. So, so the small fragments, the, the tiny fragments, can be actually degraded in our body. Okay, so once a year, if someone goes on holidays and stays in the forest without eating any food that has been packaged in plastic, we can go back to a better <laughs> state uh, for the body. Is that uh, what you're saying? Or <coughs> it's a lost uh, it's a, cause? That's a, that's a good question. Uh, uh, yes, I would do that. I, uh, not only for that. to get, get rid of the microplastic, but uh, it's, it's good to He's stay an in expert, nature for a while. take notes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is a bit depressing, isn't it? So tell us something positive. Uh, the positive things, okay. So for example, we as a scientist are doing our best to really understand how harmful, how, how harmful it is. And uh, we, uh, once we have enough information, we can, for example, suggest the mitigation strategies, like how to really get rid of the microplastics. The, we have to take into account that the microplastics are a consequence of much bigger problems it is plastics. So microplastic is not, if you treat the microplastics problem, you will have a never-ending net that you will collect, you know, every single piece of microplastics from the ocean. That's not the solution. Microplastic is a solution of the plastic waste. And now the question is not all about microplastics, it's about the plastics. We are producing a lot of plastics every single year. That's, th this is what we should care about. And how to improve the, 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 uh, the the amount of plastic that is mis misplaced or uh, wasted, because we, we recycle on the only 30%. The question is why we should we recycle all of them? And the answer is, is actually what I said. Every single plastic is different. If I have two plastics, one would be black and one would be green, I would never get a yellow. And I'm talking only about the color. If you melt the plastic, polypropylene, together, you will have mixture of chemicals because different companies use different plasticizers, phthalates, bisphenol, bisphenols, adipates, whatever, you know, dif different antioxidants. Uh, you will never get the product that you want by if you melt all the propylene together. That, that's a problem. So that's a problem. If I check the cups for yogurt in my superstore, every single of them is different. Why it is so? If there will be a regulation that would say the companies to product, you know, to harmonize the packaging, every single yogurt cup would be the same. It would definitely help, you know, to, to, you know, recycling. It would actually support the circular economy. This is what we want, but it doesn't exist anything like that. Even the bottles, everything is different. So, so recycling sounds good. It actually very well works for a pure uh, uh, pet, pet bottles. It works for them because pet bottles are not polluted. But if you see, like, it, it's, it's, yeah, recycling sounds good, but, but in real, it's very complicated. And I think the, this problem is in the hands of decision makers. That's, that's, that's how we can support that. So, so and it's connected to microplastics directly. So thanks to the bad news that we get from your research, we can push for change at the higher level, as you were saying, to reduce the types of plastics that we have in the environment. Y yes, yes, uh, yes, you, you, you're correct, but it's very hard to like, uh, say what is the strategy to push something to make some decisions. Well, if you uh, tell me there is plastics in my beer, <coughs> I'm sorry, but I'm going to vote yeah. for change. Uh, I'm, 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 uh, I'm glad that the, 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 the beer is a hallmark of this problem. Maybe I will use it's it for just a while. <laughs> but uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, so I believe that if uh, somebody would really harmonize the, 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 just the packaging, that is like 30% of 35% uh, of, the, of, of uh, the, the plastic materials are single use packaging. 35% of all plastic that we made is with single use plastics packaging. So that's. <clears throat> so back to bad news, because uh, you talked about the impact on health, but what about on the environment? And maybe it's not exactly your field, but I'm, I'm assuming that you can also tell us about what it means when it's in the, in the soil, for example, what yeah, it okay. means for plants, for animals. Because then it comes back to the food chain for us anyway. That's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Uh, it's, uh, it depends on which 
animals or biota we are talking about. Uh, for example, in aquatic environment, uh, microplastics do a lot of harmful things. One jar ingested, it can cause inflammation and reduce the fitness of, of, of the fish and organism and they, the population could be impacted. Uh, we can also sense the microplastic as another stressor that actually contribute to negative effects on organisms. Because nowadays, uh, the, the organisms in the ocean in the soil, in the forest, are not stressed only on microplastics. But microplastics are another ad additional factor that actually re re reduce the health of, of the biota. They are chemical pollutions, like pesticides, yeah. they, uh, and stuff like that. So, for example, in fish, there is an in interesting fact that, that the small fish, that very small fish, they, they instinctively hunt small particles as a food source. So once the fish, they, 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 they actually eat the microplastics, and they do it, they, f they feel full, they don't you know, eat more. Sometimes the, the, the microplastics can harm the IGFC tract and, and the fish either die or actually is smaller than is, is needed and is more valuable to be eaten by predators. And this is how the whole, for example, herrings, it was like shown that the herrings, they, they really hunt the microplastic, they eat it. And, uh, and then they, they are small and the population can, can, be, can be reduced in addition to all other factors that the, that the fish population can suffer. So it's definitely not very beneficial. In terms of soil, you mentioned, yes. that's, that's again, soil is a living piece of nature. There's a lot of microbiome that actually makes soil soil. And if we showed that the, that the microplastics can do something with your, with your microbiome, we, we wrote an excellent review that we collected all the evidences regarding the impacts of microplastics on microbiome. We published it and we showed that, that we should be worried about, that it is expected that it could also work in soil. So as a vegetarian, I'm not safe by eating just vegetables? Uh, by eating the vegetables, I think that uh, you do your best for the environment if you are vegetarian. For, for other aspects than, than, than microplastics. But I'm still poisoning myself. Uh, if you eat soil, then yes. <laughs> but if you eat vegetables, there are actually evidences that uh, maybe the nanoplastics, that is another topic that, that might be under discussion, that that's, that's, they, may trans they, they, they might be uh, transferred to, to, to plants. Uh, might, so we, we're not sure. Uh, so there, we, is hope. We, there is some ongoing research that, that use a very specific nanoplastics that have metals inside, very specific, unusual metals, and we can detect those metals in the plants. So the, it's expected that if we measure if the, if the metals are there, the, micro, the nanoplastics should be there too. But the nanoplastics is a different story. Okay. I'm asking for a friend. Is there any animal that degrade, de degrades better the microplastic and that we should eat more than uh, li the little fish that basically hunt them? Uh, what would you advise to eat uh, to yeah, have less microplastics? Yeah, okay, good, 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 <laughs> good question. So, so uh, I'm not uh, sure if I understood the question, but uh, the, uh, the, there is a lot of uh, research that is uh, about the microbiome transplantation. And, uh, and, uh, and we know that some microbiota can degrade uh, pet. Some, some Japanese study investigated that, that, that there is micro, there is microbiome that, that <laughs> degraded pet. So maybe if if um, if this kind of bacteria would be transplanted, maybe it would help. But uh, <laughs> then I don't know. But for for example, between a small fish and 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 beef, so can we assume that the beef is gonna have less microplastic? Uh, that's. Um, it's a different source. In case of fish, they really they are directly exposed through the environment, and the level is is is, is uh, definitely much higher than 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 mm. than the plastics that come from packaging. Okay, so who is ready for more bad news? I want to ask about nanoplastics now. Uh, th that's <laughs> okay. Bad news. Uh, higher level. I don't know. I don't want to like you know stress everybody, but but that's uh, so so. Uh, I think yeah. you've done it. Uh, yeah, but but that's that's how it is. Uh, but anyway, the, the nanoplastic that, that's that's a completely different story. The nanoplastics they they are very hard to study. We know we have some uh, specific approaches how to study nanoplastics, and we know that the degradation process of bigger plastic does not end up with microplastics. Microplastics, as, as I mentioned is five millimeters and below. It's still kind of like a piece of plastics. But nanoplastics are very tiny. It's, we are talking about one billion of meter. It's unbelievably small. Uh, for example, somebody calculated that, that from one microplastics, the theoretical amount of nanoplastics is 10 power 14 
particles. So it's one and 14 zeros. Nanoplastics from one microplastics. It's an enormous number. Uh, if the one nanoplastic would be one second, it would be three to five, three to uh, three point two million years per second. So, so one microplastic can degrade so many nanoplastic as its number of seconds in three point two million years. It's actually the time when, when Lucy Australopithecus afarensis was walking in in Africa as, a, as a one of the first ancestral. So that, that that's enormous. And nanoplastic is a different story. They are small, so they 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 they. They are different chemical and they, they definitely have different chemical and biological properties than the original plastics. Uh, for many reasons, one of them that, that, that quantum physics can be applied there because there is nanoscale and it's, it can directly penetrate into your cells. So they can actually be transferred almost everywhere. And as I mentioned, there are specific approaches how to study them. So there is specific, they, they, the, the scientists, they put a specific metal, palladium, it's not very common metal, inside each microplastics, and they can, they, they can confirm that once the rats are exposed in 24 hours, the microplastics, nanoplastics are everywhere, including the fetus, and including placenta from both sides, from, from, from the fetus size and from the mother size, in addition to all other, other origins. So, so we know that they can cross biological barriers easily. What we don't know is actually almost everything. We don't know what is the load in the environment because it's very hard to study them. We are talking about nanoscales. Uh, we don't know what is the harmful effect. We, we know that once the experimental animals are exposed, in, the, in this case it was rats, the, the wave of the fetus was 7% lower and the wave of the, wave of the placenta was lower as well. So we know that, that, that it, has, it might um, have adverse effects. The question is, you know, everything in toxicology is a question of dose, and we don't know nothing how we are exposed and if the concentration of micro and nanoplastics in our bodies can reach harmful effects. So again, it's a precaution principle that we are investigating all of it regarding plastic and nanoplastics, but we don't have very solid data how we are exposed, what is the level in the environment, what is the level of in, in the food and, and stuff like that. But nanoplastic, it's a new interesting topic that we should be aware of and we should study. And I don't want to nobody scared, so. <laughs> but just going back to what you said <coughs> at the beginning about nanoplastics, that the chemicals are different. Yeah. But they come from microplastics, right? I mean, yes. nanoplastic is degraded yes. microplastics. So from a set of chemicals, they degrade and they become different chemicals. Uh, uh, yes, in terms of microplastics, they can degrade up to monomers, up to single uh, chemicals that are micro uh, microplastics consist of. Hmm. Did yeah. I answer your question? No, no, yes, you, you, you <laughs> did, but I was just surprised that the the chemical, then they're different. Because I always assume if they are the building blocks of the microplastic, then you would find the yeah, same. They, they are, they are in the very different. Like very different. Chemically, the plastic are very different. Okay, so that that was indeed bad news talking about nanoplastics. Uh, I mean, uncertainty is, is in itself. Yeah, that's kind that's that's, that's yeah. Problem. That's, a, that's an open question. We don't know much about n nanoplastics in the environment in our selves so far. But please much. tell me that nobody is producing nanoplastics? No, no, okay. that, that is not, not the case. Uh, maybe you've heard about nanoparticles that is very, you know, fancy materials is in, in many applications that we know that the na na nanoparticles we are using for uh, paints, titanium oxide, that uh, me personally, I received a nice gift that is socks with uh, titanium, it's a silver, nano silver, something that should reduce uh, the number of bacteria living. I, I don't know what it is, but uh, it's it's it, well, and and you know they are selling this. You know that nanoplastics is something that is that is better and better. Uh, you mean you particles? Know, uh, what's that? You mean nanoparticles? Nanoparticles. That's that's a good. Yeah, that's a good. That, that's a good note. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, but nanoplastics? No, we don't produce nanoplastics. The nanoplastics is probably. I don't know any single application of nanoplastics, but nanoparticles, the metals, for example, yes, they they they, they are manu manu manufactured and they have their own specific applications. But just to be clear, they have applications, but the risks are similar in the sense that they can get into the body and stay there. Uh, risk is uh, actually uh, the answer is yes and no. 
Uh, mm-hmm. the, uh, the nanoparticles, yes, they can penetrate your body because they are very small. So in, in, in with respect, with the size, yes, they can, they can do something. But the risk is always connected with a specific adverse health outcome, specific outcomes that, uh, with specific effects, let's say, and they are different. The metals definitely work different than, than the organics because the, the, the plastics are actually organics. Okay, well, all of this is not very reassuring. Um, so tell me, who is in charge of monitoring the situation, setting up regulations on the limits of what we should absorb, what should end up in the environment? Please tell me someone uh, is in charge. That's, uh, that's, 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 that's a tough question. Uh, uh, basically, okay, the, the, all the monitoring studies are actually are, are running by scientists. Because we are curious and we would like to know what is where. That, that's how it is. But I'm not sure if there is a, 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 a strict European program for every single country that would monitor the, the presence of microplastics. Uh, every single state have their own regulation and they, they do measure contaminants, for example, in drinking water, but, but, but also in the environment. But I'm not sure about microplastics. They are, however, they are regulations in US, for example, it's called uh, uh, Microbeats Free Water X from 2015. And they, the only regulation is dealing with rinse of cosmetics. So what the regulation says is that in cosmetics, that is rinse off and goes to waste, there should not be microplastic, that's it. For example, sunscreen that you don't rinse off is completely okay. But for shampoos, for other products, cosmetic products, they, they, that's, that, you know, that the application of microplastics is banned. In the European Union, we are close to that because uh, European Environment, uh, uh, ECHA, uh, European Chemical Agency, European Chemical Agency, uh, I'm sorry, European Chemical Agency, they propose, I think in 2018 or 19, the ban of microplastics in cosmetics. And uh, I think in this year, it, the proposal should be finalized and then we will see what will happen. So this sounds like good news, but is there any way to actually um, control that it's implemented? Uh, yeah, of course, it, it will be implemented. Uh, I'm wrong. It's not about the cosmetics. It's about the manufacturing of microplastics and microplastics in primary microplastics in products. So it's not only a cosmetics. It's actually, it would be a ban or regulation of every single plastics that we manufacture and put it in, 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 in products. So, so yes, and I hope it will be implemented, of course, yeah. Uh, implemented, sure, but I, I mean, <coughs> who then, do we have the technology to control that the shampoo or whatever then does not include microplastics when it goes on the market? Okay, that's uh, the, the in terms of the, the cosmetics. For example, in shampoos, I I I am when I buy, buy a shampoo, I look what is there, and you might be surprised how many cosmetic products actually contain microplastics. And uh, well, we have some, of course, the, 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 the detection system, the detection methodologies that we have are good for bigger plastics, but if cosmetics is completely okay, those plastics are bigger. And actually you can feel them. If you have a shampoo and a shampoo, you know, you feel like a piece of sand between your, between your fingers, it's actually microplastics. I mean, and it's even not sand? No, it's not. It's, I wish it would be a sand, but it's, it's, it's not. It's not. It Maybe if you put, uh, put, that's a good question. Like if you put there a sand, I would say the customers would not be probably, they would not see the difference, but, but your uh, base tube would probably get the difference because you would scratch it. That's, that's why you, you use plastics, but, uh, that, but that's the only difference. It could be a marketing argument on the label <coughs> to say with extra sand. With extra sand, like I'm 30% sure of sell the sell volume well. is a sand. So, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, that's, but by the way, the microplastic, it's, it's a kind of like a, mm, uh, it's a thing of, of, of commercial, like, the, you know, the, the customers, I mean, the producers, they say, if there is a microplastics, it has a better property. But before microplastics, you know, we use a shampoo and nobody really complain about the effectivity on, you know, this and that. So it's, you know, and they, they add their microplastic and, you know, they say, we have new formula, the microplastic is there, but the microplastic is not, it's, 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 it's it's not necessary. It doesn't do anything, I can tell. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like a good argument to sell a product anyway. I mean, maybe shampoo is nanoparticles, maybe people would be amazed, but uh, plastics? Mm. Not sure. Um, we're almost at the end of our little conversation there, so you have still a few minutes to think about your question for André. So be ready, because as I said before, no question, no wine. 
So, how are you going to save us? What's the next step in your research uh, that will help um, have more data on the impacts of <laughs> health, for example? What will, you know, how can you convince policymakers to, uh, to address the issue of plastics a bit more aggressively? That's, that's, no, 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 I can, no, no, I I'm, 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 I'm thinking, no, 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 that's, that's completely, that, that's a very relevant question, that's a very relevant question, because we as a scientist, we, we, we do our studies, we do our research, but it must end up in, in the policy, of course. So your question is very Brussels-like question, but, uh, but I like it, you, it's, it's very relevant, it's very relevant, it's very relevant. Uh, uh, I have to say, true, I, I don't know, I'm not a decision maker, but uh, we would do our best to collect, you know, the information, uh, you know, and to describe the situation, to describe the toxicity, to describe whatever is relevant for decision makers to actually take the action. Mm -hmm. And the decision makers, they need a lot of supporting information to make a decision. So what we can make is actually to do our job and, and do toxicological studies and to bring another piece of evidence that this and that is good or bad and should be banned or should be regulated. That's all we can do. That's, that's my piece of contribution. Right, and so maybe I put too much pressure on your shoulders uh, as, as one human being. Uh, but with that, talking about you specifically, what would be the biggest need for, you know, the next step in research in general for microplastics? What's, what's, okay. What would be the that's, that's, biggest that's, that's, milestone? That's a, that's a question that I can answer. Uh, I, I, it's, it's described in, in, vi in vitro. It means that uh, we use a cell cultures, a very separated cell culture in a petri dishes that, that the macrophages can degrade the plastics. But for me, again, the microplastic is not a one particle. There are different kinds, different shapes, different sizes, different chemicals. So I would be really interested in how we human, I, I, uh, how our human macrophages are able to degrade the macrophages because this is not described. So, so from this research, we can directly know if the macrophages is a real problem if they are not degraded or hardly degraded, or it's a piece of cake for macrophages. In the, and then we can something say about the risk of hazard materials such as microplastics. So that, that's, that's something that I am amazed and, and, and uh, I will definitely would well, be interested to do it. That's quite a positive note to, to end a depressing topic. Yeah, um, okay. no, in the sense that it's not just about measuring and then panicking, but uh, also finding solutions to degrade it better and maybe understand uh, which ones we should really worry about and which ones we can live with. Um, I am at the end of my own questions. Andre, do you want to add something before I give the floor to the... Uh, maybe the last, the, the real last comment, that the microplastics is a problem, but it's a consequence of a plastic problem. So if we solve the plastic problem, we will, there will be no science talk about microplastics in the future. But then what would you do? <laughs> Uh, believe me, we as a human kind are experts on on making uh, or producing really bad chemicals. So I will never lose a job. <laughs> that's 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 what I know. Oh, now we end on a bad note. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you very much. So my pleasure. Uh, we have time for some questions from the audience. Then we might have some questions from the online audience, and then we might have some wine if you've been preparing your question properly. So, who wants to go first? Oh, wow. A lot of questions. But they want to drink. <laughs> okay. So, there you go. <laughs> Hello, thank you for all the details. Um, there's, I remembered something that I got as a gift, uh, and uh, uh, it was not plastic. It looked like plastic. It was a little bottle, n not flexible, not soft, uh, very thin, although full of water, uh, containing half a liter, and uh, keeping the water very cool in the fridge and keeping it cool even afterwards, uh, once it was on the table. And it was very nice, and there was something written on it that I hadn't seen when I was offered that little gift. And it said, made exclusively of sugar cane, sugar cane. It was not plastic, it looked like plastic, it was not plastic, and it was made out of sugar cane. That's, that, yeah, that's, the that's, question is... What is it? You know about it, and uh, how safe is that in comparison? It's a, probably, it's, it's, it's a PLA, it's a polylactic acid, uh, copolymer. It's, it's a polymer made uh, out of uh, sugar cane, as, as, you, as you mentioned. It's, it's one of the solutions, basically. Like, we can replace a specific, 
you know, plastics, these, these are bioplastics. In this, it means that the plastics are easily degradable and then come from uh, the, the sugar-rich plants, specifically sugarcane. Uh, it's, it's good for foodware. It's good for one-use forks, plastics, tables. I'm, I'm surprised that it's used for bottles, but, uh, but, but it's, uh, it's, 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 I don't, I don't want to say quite common, but I, 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 I found it quite often, and the foodware is made out of polylactic acid PLA. That's, that's, that's what it was, it probably, most probably. Uh, by the way, the, the, the biopolymers, I, I would like maybe highlight that it's, it's, it's a very good replacement of traditional plastics, but it's not suitable for construction materials. It's not definitely not for you know the uh, the textile or automotive industry because it would degrade <laughs> it would degrade quite 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 easily. But for footwear, for me, for one use single use bottles, for forks, and and stuff like that, it's 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 perfect. Diapers, sometimes I made of it. That's a good. Any other question? Yes. Thank you for your question. Good evening. Uh, you were talking about macroplastic in placenta and in uh, in the rats that are not uh, growing well, etc. Is there any study that is may doing the link between microplastics in the blood, in the human blood, and uh, and infertility and increasing the infertility? That's a wonderful question. That's a wonderful question. That's that's really one of the things that is actually happening. That that is a decrease in fertility generally in males and females, uh, in men's and, and, and women's in, in men and women in in, uh, in uh, all over the globe. Uh, we think it's, it's it's because of the chemical stress and the microplastics. That's that's a question. So so the the answer is uh, actually the answer the, the answer is I'm not sure. I don't know. But a recent study showed or. Uh, there is there is actually one single study that claim that found microplastics in human in human blood, but they the methodology that they used actually used uh, a, a double spotted pyrolysis coupled with gas chromatography and mass spectroscopy. Make the long story short, they do not measure the particles in the blood, but they evaporate the blood and they measure the chemicals that our microplastics consist of. So they did not find any single particle in the blood, but they say that we have some chemicals that might be just chemicals, but these chemicals are part of the plastics, and they say we found the chemicals, so the plastic must be there. But that's not the case, and we need more studies to really find microplastics in the blood. So the, my answer is, actually, we don't know. We need to study that. We need more bio-monitoring studies to understand what is the load, what we have in the blood, and we have number of biobanks that have blood, we just need somebody who will look into it and then there will be nice so-called association studies between the microplastics and the fertility. But make long story short, you're right, I mean many of the chemicals, they, they, they impact the reproduction. We know that and the microplastics, they have them. So the, the, it's, a, it's an excellent question, thank you. But we don't know yet, we need more studies, that's how it is. If I, if I may, um, follow up on that. So, is there any hope that such study would be able to make the difference between the origin of the hazardous chemicals in the, in the blood, for example, by saying, okay, this comes definitely from microplastics that have been ingested, or this comes from pesticides, or other kind of pollutants, or there is no way to do that. What you see is chemicals and just chemicals. Um. Well, the, 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 I am not sure if I if I get the question correctly, but the the, the thing is that um, we can uh, this methodology can't tell anything about the particles, so there must be there are other techniques. They will be able to confirm the microplastics in the blood, but these specific techniques, no. You can't say if the chemicals that was detected are coming from microplastics or are generally part of the chemistry that we have in the blood, because we all have many of the chemicals in the blood, including those that are parts of the microplastics. Did I answer the question? Yes, I, you I, did. I, yes, <laughs> okay, good. Basically, it was about differentiating the origin of the chemicals, but yeah. you, you answered. Uh, you had a question, I think. Who was it? Over there. Okay, okay good. Yes, thank you so much for this very interesting talk, first of all. Um, I was wondering if there is any, to your knowledge, any technology or research on creating technology that will extract microplastics from the from the environment or even from the human body? 
Okay, it's, it's a very good question because now we have... Uh, okay, that's, that's a good question. That's a question. You mean when the person is alive? Ooh, that's... Otherwise uh, it can evaporate. Well, that's, that's uh, the... And now the question is from the human or from the environment or both? Both, generally. From the, from the, okay, from the humans. Uh, still, we are in the beginning, so we, I, we can't tell m many information regarding the humans. That's, that's, that's what you know. We can, we can measure them and found them in, 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 in food and, uh, and marine animals, for example, but, but uh, in, in humans that we still don't have any information. Regarding the, the environment, that's incredibly challenging. Incredibly challenging. So there, is, there was some... Um, suggestion that uh, some uh, long net, a very fine mesh would be created that can collect, collect not only the microplastic but also the, the plastic wave in, in the oceans. But can you imagine how high, how big the, the nets should be? You know, uh, maybe you are aware of the uh, called plastic patches or plastic islands in the oceans. It's, it's size of, of Europe. It's, it, and the, the, the size, the, the uh, don't imagine, you know, the, the, the solid piece of, of, uh, of plastics in the middle of the ocean. It's like, a, it's like a, they call it a plastic smoke or plastic dust. It's, it's you know, when you uh, swim in, the, in, in that part, you, you basically touch plastics, you know, every time, you know, you, you make your swim. So, so that's how it is. And in, in that specific region, the density of microplastic is high. The density of micro, the plastics, microplastics. So, so technologically, that's not feasible. That's not feasible at all to, to really collect the, the, the plastics from the ocean. And there is another thing, that the load of plastics into the ocean, mainly coming from Indonesia and China, which are the biggest plastic producers, of, uh, polluters of, of the plastic, of, of oceans, with plastics, it's it's more than you would be able to collect. So that's uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. It's it's too skeptical and um, uh, too scary again, but uh, but technologically, it's difficult, and there is no technology currently that would be able to do it in a, in, in a high, high scale. You can do it in in a local pond. That's that's feasible, but not in the oceans. That's impossible. The only solution again and again is a plastic in the beginning, less plastic, more plastic recycled unifying the, uh, the covers, the packaging, and then less plastic in, in the waste, that's all. So, but no, actually, I'm, I'm sorry, but very good question, thank you. Good. Again, to follow up on that, so if we talk about the ocean or rivers or whatever, microplastic don't float on the surface, they can go in three dimensions, <coughs> I suppose. So a net yeah. that is mm. small enough to catch microplastic would probably catch all the fish. That's, that's correct. That's, that's, that, that, that's correct. That's correct. Yeah. Uh, 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 it depends. Like some mi mi some plastic microplastics then go to the bottom, like PVC. It's it's very heavy. Uh, some plastics that go to the bottom, they they are biofold, so the small organisms are attached, and then they can they can swim again. And some of they 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 are close to the surface. And some plastics are something in between. So again, from the te technological point of view, the net should be not only wide but also very deep, and you would collect almost every single fish there. Which there is another fact that is maybe important to mention that currently the, the weight of plastics in the oceans is, is in the ratio one to three with the weight of the fish. In 2050, it is estimated that in the ocean, the, the weight of the plastics would be the same as the weight of all fish in the ocean. I don't not know what to say, it's awful. Uh, I'm sorry, no, not good <laughs> news for receiving. Who has um, a question? Oh, more questions, super. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Uh, last week, uh, here in Brussels, we had the annual conference of the European Union on um, plastic converters. I'm not part of the industry. Okay. Um, and then there were the speech by the president and also the president of uh, Europlastics. You can imagine that they were complaining too much uh, rules and regulation from Brussels, and then plastics is seen always as evil and so on. Plastic industry is enormous, yes. Okay. Um, my question is about the, the recycling of plastics, because uh, as you say, it can be one of the solutions uh, if we don't want to increment a lot yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, how much plastic uh, it, it is around us. But when you, when you recycle plastics, the material that you get is, uh, in terms of quality, is the same quality from the material that you put in, 
and can create more macroplastics or uh, okay uh, the, re the recycling first of all the, the the plastic industry the plastic industry is enormous so in currently in Europe as you may know there are more than 52,000 companies that somehow process the microplastics so the, the from the financial point of view it's, it's a huge industry so the annual uh, uh, financial uh, overturn is like 300 million euros a year and it creates 1.2 million jobs so it's it's something that we can overlook they have big lobby and they are constantly uh, so so and we are we are banning more and more chemicals and they are actually developing more and more chemicals but developing chemicals is extremely expensive because you have to you have to you have to prove that your chemicals is safe and it costs a lot of money so for example yeah I was I was talking about the phthalates so the phthalates were banned and uh, uh, company uh, I'm not sure if I can mention that, but uh, uh, um, why not? But basically, BISF they they created a, a replacement of, uh, of of phthalates called Dinge, and they invested two million euros just to bring one single chemical on market. So so I can imagine that they complain, so they because they invest a lot of money in in, in plastics. Uh, in terms of quality, if you mix all the plastic, if you, as I mentioned, the recycling process is very difficult because you can't really mix the same plastics together because you will never get the product that you want, the property of the product, dealing with plasticity, color, shape, and stuff like that. It's even more complicated because uh, the recycling, uh, I, in, in, in a plane, when I was on the way here to Brussels, I received a plastic bottle and the, the plastic is pet, there is a lid from uh, poly, poly, uh, propylene and there is a polyethylene foil. So there are three plastics together and you have to separate it manually. So somebody must be paid to really take three parts together. Why is this important? Because when you melt, for example, if you melt 0.1% of PVC with polypropylene, the polypropylene will never polymer again. So it will come up from the machine as a soup. It will never create polymer again because PVC is full of chlorine and chlorine has some specific you know, reactions with polypropylene so it will not react again. So that's why you have to really separate the plastics. The other things uh, the, the, is it's that many of the plastics are dirty from chemicals that you, are, you have no idea what was there. So that's also a complicated uh, the recycling. The quality is it's currently is much cheaper to really make new plastics from new Polypropylene that costs six euro per uh, six euro cents per kilo, then to recycle and try to prepare something new. That's and, and the quality is lower. That, that's why. That's I'm not sure if I answer your questions. Recycling, we are going to create more uh, macroplastics. Oh, okay, okay. The uh, that's a question. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, well, I will speculate. No, uh, so I don't know. I, I'm not sure. No, I don't know. But don't we take the risk of creating microplastic any time we have plastics? Uh, that's right. But the question: if if uh, the microplastics would be more released from the plastics that are recycled than from the original plastics, right? So then I don't know. Okay. I can't. Sorry. I can't comment on that. There were two or three hands raised in the back. I see. Just two now. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, well, a personal question, what brings you to the plastic topic? And second, you said that microplastics are everywhere. Do you have any idea where something that's immune to microplastic, person, thing, whatever? <coughs> okay, the, 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 the first question. Uh, I have to say that uh, that I have a friend that, that, that is a, a, a designer of plastics. So every single company, they have people that design the plastic for specific purposes. And so he's like a chemist, chemist person. And he's talk, he was talking so much about plastics all the time. And uh, now he's, uh, he uh, used to be a, a, a CEO of a company in, in the middle of Europe. So, so but, but uh, uh, now he's out of business. But, uh, but he actually, he was talking about that much that, that I started to really like, you know, uh, trying to understand like what is there and how all this plastic works because suddenly you you realize that it's not that simple as it looks like that's really a really quite complicated chemistry inside and the second one uh, uh, if somebody is if somebody is immune to microplastics uh, rocks y y actually uh, actually yes 
Yes, it's, it's possible, and I'll tell you why. Uh, in, in pharmaceuticals, some of the pharmaceutical, some of the pharma uh, drugs, they have polymer, they are actually trapped in polymer spheres. And, and we know that the people that are constantly exposed to those polymers, small pieces that is the chemical, is, the, the drug is inside, uh, they, they, uh, they have a faster detoxification mechanism. It's, it's called accelerated uh, uh, particle clearance. And, uh, and so, 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 so more you exposed, your organs can respond faster and more effect effectively. So at least this is what is believed will be the case of microplastics. But again, we need that's we are in the beginning of understanding like how it is behaved. But uh, but uh, but the human body is extremely good in detoxification. Like if, for example, if you see the smokers, they well, microplastics is a problem, but, but smoking that that's even in inverse. And there are many, many, even like worse chemicals that you can imagine. And the people, they can survive 60 years and more. So, so we have a very strong detoxification system. Finally, some good news. <laughs> there was a question over there, I think. I hope I did not touch uh, the smokers. That's not my intention. But there are plastics in cigarettes, isn't it? Mm, I'm not sure okay, about that. That's for another event. Okay. <laughs> That's the last problem with cigarettes, the plastic. If there will be plastics, that's definitely not a problem of cigarettes. But anyway, that, that's a different topic. <laughs> but thank you for your question, excellent. Uh, yes, uh, I had one question because you mentioned earlier the, the drinking water. And so obviously the municipalities have a responsibility in providing clean drinking water to their citizens, even if we're working with upstream work, trying to limit the amount of microplastics that end up in the system. And here we're already using like mechanical cleaning, chemical cleaning, biological cleaning. So I was wondering what potential do you see for developing these methods further in limiting microplastics pollution in the drinking water? Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's a very good question, very relevant one. Filtration, probably. Like more, more uh, like probably very extreme kind of filtration because you are filtering, you, you, your filter must be in micrometer size. So that's, that's, that's the, I mean, I'm not a technology person, so that's, that's what. Uh, but you, you said in the beginning, that was very interesting, that you said that you know, the, the producers should provide a clean water. That's the question, of like, what is clean water? How is it defined? It's defined from, you know, you have to look in the regulations, and what is not in the regulation is approved, and the microplastics is not there. So you, you can actually you can see the microplastics inside the bottle, and nobody can complain because it's not part of regulation, right? So it's it's technically clean water. But 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 but, but dealing with the technology, it, it's wrong. I'm wrong, of course. I'm just you like like you know present the worst case scenario or some you know it, it's a theoretical question. Uh, but 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 back from from uh, I'm, I'm not a technology person, but I would say that the really extreme kind of filtration can rid of the microplastics. That's that's what I would guess, but I'm not sure. I don't know, but a very good question, thank you. Is there any other question in the room? Oh, no question. Or no time for question. Well, there is a bit of time, I think, for question. So yeah, let's go ahead. So, thank you. Okay. Well, I've prepared lots of questions because I really like the wine, especially the Moravian one. But uh, okay, out of the box. I guess kind of depressed that the microplastics are everywhere, even in our food, our bodies and everywhere. Are there microplastics in space, or are there microplastics on moon? Why are you planning? No, no, to that's, go a good, that's a good. That's a that's a good question. That's a that, that's a very good question. Hundred uh, percent, uh, yes, of course. I mean, yes, I'm I'm a serious. I'm of course, yes, yes. I mean, again, like whenever the human, where is the human footprint? There must be microplastics. I can tell. So. I'm sure that I see at least one photo of the footprint of uh, of human on 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 the moon. So I'm I'm, I'm guessing there must be at least one microplastic particle, <laughs> and and space 100 percent yes, 100 percent so as well with all the robots that we sent. Uh, 
I mean, at least I'm not sure what is the uh, the coating of, of uh, the spacesuit made of, but I would guess that there will be at least a couple of microplastics. Uh, microplastics are as well as wires, wires from la laundering. So microplastics uh, are not only the spheres, but maybe I forgot to mention that, for example, during the laundry at home, like there is approximately 700,000 of wires are produced, produced during, during laundry. And there are also like micro scale uh, microparticles, microplastics. Uh, so, so back to your questions, if uh, somebody was uh, on the moon or Venus or Mars, microplastics will be there, will be there too. <laughs> But the radiations will kill you first, I think. So don't worry. So, yeah. were there any other question? Go ahead, if there. Yeah. Uh, I was on a toilet, so sorry if this was asked in the meantime. But uh, there's been an increase in allergies lately, right? Like um, for crustaceans, for peanuts, um, <laughs> gluten, lactose, whatever. So, are there any? Is there any data? Are there any studies that suggest that this could also be uh, because of our increased use of plastics? Uh, that's a very good question. Thank you. That's that's one of the things that m m might be studied. Uh, as I said, the microplastic is one thing, but the chemical inside the plastics is another thing. And in, in contrast to microplastics, the chemicals that have microplastic inside, they are well studied because they, the, the, the plastics are studied and the plastics release all those chemicals and we, we breathe them, we eat them. So, so they are studied and many, so not the microplastics, but we know the chemicals, they can deregulate immunity specifically, for example, T cells that, that are responsible for asthma, allergies, and, and, and actual deregulation of the, of, of the immune system can lead to inflammatory uh, uh, environments that, that is a, 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 a fundamental uh, background of, of many diseases. So, so asthma, allergies, is definitely, we know specific chemicals. That, that are uh, associated with, uh, with, with specific diseases, with specific allergies. But generally, if, if the asthma or allergies are discussed, we are talking about the overall chemical stress, because we as a human are, are exposed to many chemicals, not only from plastics, but you know, as I mentioned, for example, pesticides or specific chemicals that, that our uh, textile has, for example, PFAS or you know, stuff like that. So, 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 so we are generally exposed to many chemicals, and together they may create something like, uh, like uh, uh, they can increase the problem with allergies. That, that's what, what the belief is. It's true, but many of the chemicals can be found in plastics and potentially in microplastics. So your question is very re relevant, and actually, I, I believe it will be studied in detail for sure. But you couldn't really diagnose this very specifically because you couldn't trace specifically what kind of objects you have to avoid. Not uh, to get, uh, yeah, in yes, with yes, the no. Uh, it's it's kind of it's a question not of toxicology but rather epidemiology. So how do people study this problem generally? So they basically collect all the information about the part uh, participants that are studied. For example, there are thousand people from one city, and they describe what they eat, what they do, where they work, how they travel, what they you know how they behave, they smoke, drink, and stuff like that about the diseases, and they measure the chemical of the blood. And they, on the other hand, they have a, a health uh, determination of their health. And for those people that have asthma, based on, on a specific approaches in, 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 uh, in, in epidemiology, you can associate a specific stressor with a specific uh, disease. But it's very technical. Uh, basically, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, that's 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 that's. Can, that's can we I ever imagine a doctor saying you are allergic to your water bottle? Uh, you are. I don't uh, get your question. Can you repeat? Uh, that? Is it I, I, my understanding that it's never going to be possible for a doctor to diagnose specifically that someone is allergic to a set of chemicals and then should not be exposed to plastic bottles? Yeah, that's that's that that's that's right. Yeah, okay. So we can. Yeah, you, you're right. You're completely right. So based on very specific approaches, we can say that uh, these chemicals are associated, for example, with asthma or allergies. We can we can tell that that that's possible. But the question is, so what? You will get, you will not be at home because the chemicals are, you know, everywhere at your home because many of the stuff at home is not a wood, it's not, it's not, you know, a glass or it's, it's plastics. In my home, the 90% of the stuff is plastic, from the floor to, to wood, uh, to wood, to uh, tables to, 
you know, computer, that's TV. That's that's my my sofa. It's plastic. That's how it is. Yeah, that, that's a good question. What to do? Convenient. Yeah, that's that's not really um, solution, but you, you can describe it. But in a way, it's good so that we don't have to. I mean, if people start being allergic to specific object, then it becomes complicated to live in society. And uh, yeah, you know. but the truth is, well, the, those chemicals or those chemicals that, that that I know can support, you know, the uh, the, the asthma is not okay. What, what you mentioned is that you know somebody can be allergic to specific chemicals. It doesn't work like that. But the chemicals can contribute to, for example, severity of asthma allergies. For example, that you might have higher levels of the disease because you are exposed to the chemicals. So they contribute to severity to higher levels of the, of the disease. And so you have asthma, but you have much worse asthma if, if, the chemi if you live in the environment with specific chemicals. This is how it, how it is. But you are not allergic to specific chemicals. You might have, but... Uh, but and uh, that's how you see I'm a political scientist. <laughs> Because I don't understand these things. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, thank you. Um, more questions, please. Hello, thanks a lot. Uh, I might sound like a plastic lobbyist for a bit, but I'm trying to reverse the solution to the, to the problem. Do you think that there is a potential technological improvement that could make plastics not emit microplastics in a way? Let's say we prove collection to a, great, to a great extent in those countries that are the biggest offenders in the ocean, and the rest of the plastics, they just don't gets detached from the big plastic mm -hmm. article. That, that's, that's a very good question. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your question. Uh, yes, it's possible. But how you do it? You know, you have plastics, and if you put there an, an incredible number of antioxidants and UV stabilizers, then it will stay forever. But, you know, but do you do want... Do we want that? Th that's a question. So you will definitely... There are approaches that can make plastics more stable, less degradable, you know, be more... Uh, uh, be more, uh, how to say that, uh, let's say, not that valuable, uh, vulnerable for uh, UV degradation and stuff like that. So it will be more, more, more uh, less degradable. But do we really want that? So yet, yeah, the answer is yes, there are approaches, but you made a plastic that is really hard to degrade and will stay forever. Even the normal plastics can stay hundreds of years in the environment. Yeah, somebody estimated that the plastic bags, that we you know, use them every single day, uh, by the way, it's estimated that in the case of plastic bags, use, we use 60,000 plastic bags every three seconds. It's enormous. And we are, you know, there's one single use, but they stay up to 1,000 years. You can still find pieces of, of these specific plastics in the environment after 1,000 years. So if we make, you know, those plastics less degradable, less, you know, producing the microplastics, oh, that's, 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 that's not what we want, probably. But it's possible, yeah, technologically it's possible. And they are, micro, they, they are plastics that are hard to degrade for specific purposes, yeah. More questions? I think you are thirsty. <laughs> All right, okay. Uh, so if we're out of question, then I, maybe I have the last one? Go ahead. So uh, we talked about, well, you talked about many, uh, what we should do about limiting the amount of plastic in the environment as the most obvious solution. What can we do? We're not policymakers, we're not maybe scientists. What can we do as citizens to um, help with the problem? So you gave mm. some, some hints already on what we should do, I guess using less plastics. Um, but also what can we do to rid ourselves of the, or reduce our exposure to microplastics? Just as, as a conclusion, so what can mm. we do so that we don't go home or we don't <laughs> get drunk sad, we get drunk happy? <laughs> uh, so. Okay. Uh, okay. I try to be as, uh, as less pessimistic and as, as I could. Okay, uh, the, the, the first question. Uh, what we can do? Uh, we have to vote the proper parties that would have uh, the right uh, political pressure on, on the plastics problem on the plastic industry and, 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 and how, how we treat uh, the plastics in, in, in Europe. Uh, maybe we can share the information about uh, the problem of plastics and on the environment with the others or with those people that are not so uh, informed. That's, that's uh, what I feel is my mission, that's, uh, that I, I try to visit the high schools to really uh, teach them about uh, uh, plastics and microplastics, and uh, th that's what we can do in our personal life, I would say. 
and uh, to avoid microplastics, that's that's um, frankly speaking, that's hard. Uh, you, you know, like uh, I don't know, like uh, how do people shop? But I shop in a supermarket, or my wife do it, and uh, everything what I bring home is in plastics. I can tell 100 percent, maybe 200 percent, like really everything, and. Uh, they are stores in my city when you can bring your own container and bring something to your home. But those shops are, you know, I have, I, if I would be uh, so strict and would like to avoid the packaging, I would spend probably three hours shopping in downtown. That's, so I don't see a solution uh, that I can do something in my personal life that will make a change, unfortunately. I don't do it because uh, that's how we live, all of us probably. But, but if something would happen on a, on a European scale, because we are in Brussels, so we have to think it big, and if something would say that the packaging would be unified, would have you know only certain type of plastics, it would help the recycle, and I as a customer would have no choice but to buy only you know the, the plastics that are approved for packaging and are only one type. So it's made not maybe a question of us as a customers on a you know uh, daily based lives, but maybe the, the question may be higher. That's that's maybe that's maybe I I, I see it. Thank you. Ah, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have time for one last? No. no okay. okay. No, I had one, but it's. I mean, I forgot to ask it before, but why did you choose this field of research? What, uh, what, what drove you to work on that? Actually, I am an environmental toxicology. So the microplastics and plastics is one field that, that I'm interested in, but, but, but basically we, we do describe, we describe the toxicity of, of chemicals. And this is how, what I personally feel is it's good for the environment, because if we would collect enough evidences, some chemicals specific will be banned or restricted. And this is how we can uh, make environment better, and this is what I want. So there are different kinds of people who like to take, you know, take care of the environment, and uh, you can collect waste. You can, you know, for example, uh, uh, live uh, or, or use uh, 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 bioproducts and stuff like that. And, um, and I decided to, to become a toxicologist and to, to study the problems of chemicals that are. You know, becoming more and more problem, and, and we believe that that if we would produce enough evidence of specific chemicals, the chemicals would, would be banned or restricted, and this is what we want. Or we can show that it's completely harmless, and the benefit is more than the risk connected with the specific chemicals. That's also possible. But yes, the 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 the, the key the key motion is in my life is environment. That's 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 why I do it. That's a good one. Good. Thank you very <laughs> much. So maybe uh, you deserve some applause. Thank you. So we, um, oh, you can keep uploading. It's fine. I think we can stay all night uploading. No. Uh, so we have reached the end of the event. So just two things before uh, you go and uh, enjoy a nice uh, glass of wine. Um, you can follow similar events on Facebook. What would be the handle? Yeah, okay, through the Facebook page of the organizers. You can find out uh, information about future science cafes, uh, and uh, they're all great. I had a look on the Facebook page, they're all great, so I encourage you to uh, follow up. Uh, thank you very much, and now please, I release you, and uh, you can talk about uh, more positive things, or keep talking about microplastics with Andre. I think he's, you stick around, right? Yeah, I'm staying. So, I'm really happy to meet you all. It's going to be next to the wine, so in case you want to keep chatting with him, he's there. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.